They say to never judge a book by its cover, but that's what everybody's doing when they look at your website's hero section. So in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at 10 outstanding hero section designs and break down why they're amazing and how you can recreate that magic. ConceptCapers.com is unapologetic about its style. It is fun, it's playful, it's illustrative. It's just a whole bunch of boldness because of its style. And again, I love people that lean into that style. And it's leaned in even more so, not just with the colors and the shapes and the big kind of bubbliness of the site, but they've also said, hey, like we're kind of representing this whole thing through a card game. How about uh, we actually play into that a little bit more and animate this carousel? It looks like cards being dealt on the table. So even the animations and the playfulness that are happening there are intentional to lean into this brand, to lean into the style. And I think some of us kind of stop halfway. We're afraid of going all in on the brand and Concept Capers is not afraid of doing that. That's something that we can all take with us. Be bold, be proud of who you are, and push your brand to the limits. It makes a huge impact. We have a website for rightsferrymansion.org, and the first thing that jumps out of me in this design is that it is a true blue rule of two thirds layout. Now we see a lot of two column layouts, but that's not what's happening here. We're actually seeing two thirds of the space being used by this color block with all the typography in it and one third of the layout being used by imagery. This is really, really common for editorial, photography, cinematography, and they're doing a really good job here of reutilizing this classic technique of the rule of two thirds. And we don't see a lot of that in web design. So it immediately makes it interesting. The next thing that I think is really interesting and something we can take away and learn from this layout is that the imagery has been specifically selected to play off of the color palette of this color blocked area. The drapes here are rich and green, plays off of the greens here. The creaminess of the walls intentionally selected to kind of contrast or complement the layout over here. And so mixing this imagery with the color blocked layout just again, spices it up, makes it a little bit more interesting. And what's also spiced it up is they took a very traditional maybe layout with the headline and the body copy and a call to action. And they just kind of like changed some of the spacing of the typography here. They did some interesting things with the lettering. So the whole thing feels classy, but new at the same time. And I think that's a really interesting execution of a hero section. Next up, we have Out There Studio. And what they're doing on their agency page is pretty out there. It is bold typography. It is bold color. It feels like a construction zone. It's catching my attention right away. That huge type is awesome. This orange and black is something that you just don't see a lot. So what does it do? It stands out. It makes a big impression. And I especially love the saturated images here. They could have just put the standard image, which we get on hover or rollover, but they've actually saturated these images, pumped the contrast, made it a little bit like a punk rock poster. You would see taped to a pole in some sort of metropolitan city. So the whole thing just kind of screams at you in this fun, modern kind of edgy way. And there's something about making an impact in this edgy way that catches your attention makes you remember what you just saw and makes you think to yourself, huh, should I go back and check that out? That was kind of cool. And so that's something for all of us to take away is what is the feeling and the emotion that people are getting immediately when they come to our websites through our hero section and will they remember it when they leave? All right, the next site is from Scrib3. The color palette's super cool. It is dark, but it also is bringing this really kind of cool light pink color. And we have a very bottom anchored, bottom heavy kind of layout where all the typography is down here. We have a really big spacious navigation and a couple of these items actually navigate as you are loading the site. Obviously we would get a really cool loader here, but the navigation and all the animation that happens here really kind of brings your eye. And as you start to scroll, you don't even realize that this element here is a really subtle three-dimensional element that moves on scroll. So the whole thing feels static. It feels futuristic. It feels fun. It feels cool. But at the same time, it's really drawing me in. It's drawing me down below. And I think that that's what they're trying to accomplish here is draw me into the content. If that's what they're doing, they are accomplishing it. It's a very strategic move and they're doing a great job. Let's take a quick break and talk about something crucial for any web project, reliable hosting. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in and that's Hostinger. Hostinger offers premium managed WordPress hosting that's perfect for developers and designers like us. They provide everything that you need, a free domain, free SSL, and even a free email account. 
But what really sets Hostinger apart is their load times and their AI tools. They offer pre-built website templates and an AI assistant that can help you create SEO optimized content in any language. It's like having a design and a content team at your fingertips. Plus their lightning fast load times will keep your site running super smooth. There's an exclusive deal for my audience. Use the promo code Jesse Showalter at checkout and you'll get an additional 10% off all of your yearly plans. That's on top of their already competitive pricing. If you want to get this offer, just head over to hostinger.com slash Jesse Showalter or click the link in the description. Don't miss the chance to get premium hosting with cutting edge tech at an unbeatable price. Meet.studio is doing something that's not usually recommended, but works well for them. And that is required exploration. That means when you launch the site, you kind of see this collage. You're like, I can't really tell what's going on. And as you start to hover over the content, everything kind of fogs up and disappears and it requires the user to explore. Now, usually this is a no-no. We don't wanna make our users work really hard to find the content, to find the projects, but in this use case, they're actually toying with our curiosity. Like as I start to move around, oh, I see that one. I wanna see what the other ones are. And it actually keeps me on site. It makes me be a little bit more invested in the content. Now I can click on any one of these and open up one of the projects, but by this simple sneaky little strategy of keeping people engaged, it makes them invest that time and therefore not want to lose out on the time that they've invested. They don't want to waste that time. They've explored this much already. They might as well keep going. Interesting strategy. Not everybody can pull it off, but it's definitely a very different way to think about making that first impression with a little bit of mystery. All right, now web flail is a much more traditional layout than we've seen. We've probably seen this layout quite a bit. Your navigation up top and you got your you know main title here with some body copy and a call to action underneath. And I think that not every website has to be this big, bold, kind of crazy, challenging experience, but it can just be done and done really well. Simple's not bad. Common is not bad as long as it's executed cleanly or very, very clean. And so they've done a good job here of having a clear call to action. And there's a very short hero. If you're going to have more of this traditional thing happening, it's nice to immediately be able to see the content down below. Again, it draws me into the content. So if you're going to go on more of this basic side, have a plan to move people down and continue that investment of time they have on your website, I think that they're doing a decent job. Again, don't be afraid of doing things that are a little bit more traditional standard. Just make sure you do them well. Now, Hero Collective has taken everything I just said and threw it out the window. They said, not us. We are going to be the Quentin Tarantino movie version of a website. You land here and it is like a punch in the face. It is like a riot or a punk rock concert is happening. It is bold. It is brash. Red's a tough color to use. They are using it. And they're even adding all these hand-drawn elements that glitch with glitchy backgrounds. They're making a statement here. And lest you just look at nothing but the colors and the boldness of this and say like, oh, I can do that. That's easy. Notice how clear that the actual typography is and actually the messaging here is like we turn brands into heroes. When I look at this in about one second, I can tell this is a brand company or a branding studio. They are not going to take my brand lightly. They're going to go all in on my brand just like they've gone all in on their brand. So if I'm looking for something a little bit more daring, a little bit more bold, a little bit more edgy that has to do with brand, it's captured my attention. I think that's something for us all to remember. Are we capturing the attention and the imagination of our users when they land on your website? Now, you don't always need to punch people in the teeth to grab their attention. This is don'tboardme.com, a boarding service for dogs, and they've captured my attention by actually capturing my heart. They've done something a little bit more cute, a little bit more whimsical, but the layout is still very, very clean, very, very awesome. But instantly, I know it has to do with dogs. I know it feels pretty modern, pretty fun. And if I feel like I'm a dog lover that's pretty modern, pretty fun, I think maybe I found my spot. The typography is big. It, it messages me. It hits me really, really hard. The dog is cute. The colors are consistent. It's a simple two-color layout. They're even using the color of the typography in the dog's leash, which I think is pretty cool. And it just kind of has like a smooth kind of like scrolling thing. Makes me want to go down and see what's happening underneath the dog. But right as I get here, I am impressed. I'm wowed. And I think I want to book now. I think I want to board my dog here. And if it gives me that kind of emotion that the designer has done their job well. The question for us is, are we making this kind of impact? And do we know how to empathize with our user and grab a hold of their heart? Now, a lot of people will throw 3D into a design and they'll just throw it in because 3D is cool. But this website is doing a really good job of using 3D in some very thoughtful ways. Notice the layout here. It's actually pretty plain. It's 
modern, it's clean, but it's plain. We've got a navigation top right, logo up here, a big title in the middle, and they've opted to put kind of like asymmetrical paragraph down here in the bottom left. It's a little bit Bauhaus, it's a little bit Swiss, it's a little bit modern, but without the 3D object, it would be a little bit boring. So they said to themselves, let's add some 3D, some interesting interaction or animation on the screen, but let's make sure that it accentuates or intensifies the already established look and feel of the website. So we don't throw grungy stuff in here. We don't throw, you know, any old object. They took something that looks like a diamond. It looks like it's morphing in and out of these expensive gem objects. So what they're doing is they're accentuating the classy look. And this is the lesson for us. You're gonna add 3D. Don't add any old 3D. Add the 3D objects and elements that intensify the already established look and feel of the website to really drive that look and feel home for your users. Rock Muse is a design subscription and there's a lot of design subscriptions popping up right now on the market. So the question is, how do you differentiate your design subscription from somebody else's? Well, I'll tell you how Rock Muse has not done it. They haven't done it with the design. I mean, the design's fine in the hero. You know, the images are cool. This kind of interaction is cool. But what they've really done is hyper-focused on their call to action and benefit-rich copy. Let's dig in and take a look. Even the design, again, it's fine, but these light rays are strategically doing a job. They're leading me to the center here and really making me think about what the main call to action is. What am I supposed to do here as a user? I'm supposed to book a call. And they are accentuating that. They are backing up that claim by saying, have a quick call and get a discount, okay? So now everything is about making that call and even the navigation is benefit rich. It supports that call to action. I wanna book these guys, but what are their services? Ah, oh, there's their services. I wanna book these guys, but what's the benefit? There's the benefit, there's the recent work, there's the pricing, and this will answer any of my questions. There's a lot of us that design great websites. We can make things really, really beautiful, but we don't know how to center people on a primary action with benefit-rich copy. If you can do this, you will elevate your designs tenfold and you'll be much more valuable to your clients. Well, that's it. Those are 10 hero sections that are absolutely crushing it. And really, at the end of the day, 10 lessons that you and I can take away and learn from these 10 hero sections. The question is, how will you start implementing the lessons you learned in this video into your web design projects? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you check the description for a bunch of helpful links that have to do with designing and building websites, tools I use, the process that I go about. It's all down there in the description. And if you're interested in watching more of this content, check this video right here and I'll see you in the next one.